friends, my name is Kyla and this is Brandy. And today we are doing a second video of searching through the subreddit, Am I the Asshole? So I had a lot of fun reading the posts last time on the subreddit, Am I the Asshole? So I thought I would do it again. So just a couple disclaimers that one, everybody has their own opinions and that's totally fine. And if you have a different opinion than me, go ahead and put it down in the comments. And also that everybody's opinions are based off their own life experiences and their own biases. Okay, so let's just get into it here. Am I the asshole for telling people not to eat the food at my sister's wedding? Okay, so based off just the title, I would have no idea if whether or not this person is the asshole. Um, just in general, if we know nothing else, you tell people not to eat the food. I'm inclined to believe you're not the asshole because why would you be telling somebody that? Telling somebody not to eat the food at the wedding? Unless you knew the food was bad or maybe it would cost your sister less if she didn't. I, I don't know. This is very weird based off the title. So my husband, 27 year old man, and I, 26 year old woman, were married eight months ago. We had a big wedding with lots of food and drinks and people. I knew we would likely have leftovers, so I had arranged for them to be donated to the soup kitchen that we sometimes work with. However, my mom went behind my back and took most of it with her. I don't really know what happened to the rest of the food. Okay, I was gonna say that is so awesome that you decided to donate the food to, well, OP, obviously. At first I was gonna say that's so awesome that OP and her husband wanted to donate the leftover wedding food to a local soup kitchen. That's awesome. And the mom, but OP's mom took it and you don't know what happened to it. That is weird, so let's keep reading. My sister Callie, 30 year old woman, got married over the long weekend. She didn't wanna mess with any of the planning and knowing how my mom was during my wedding, decided to let our mom take over the whole thing. Um, I'm currently planning a wedding. I like to be the one making most of the decisions. Dennis and I would be making the decisions. Um, not my parents, but I totally understand why somebody would be like, I. I don't want to worry about this at all. Somebody else make the decisions for me. All we had to do was show up where we were told and party. The ceremony was beautiful, but it was when the buffet was revealed that I noticed something odd. The food looked eerily similar, like identical to what I had for my wedding, except for it looked a little more dry out and sad. Oh my gosh. Okay, so OP earlier in the post said that she got married eight months ago. If this is the same food, even if it's been in the freezer for eight months, I found an opening and went to ask my mom about it, where she happily told me that she saved a fortune by unfreezing the food from my wedding to serve the guests now. I was horrified and immediately voiced my concerns about safety. She got upset and said I was acting like a snob and should be happy the food wasn't going to waste. I argued that it was never going to be wasted, but she wouldn't hear it. Yeah, if OP was going to donate the food to a food kitchen, the food wasn't going to waste. I'm curious to know what food this is that was been in the freezer for the past eight months. I didn't want to make a scene, but I was worried about people getting sick. Um, yeah, I would be too. So I snuck off to see my sister. She was horribly embarrassed. Well, if the sister didn't know, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. She didn't know. I mentioned that mom said something about saving money, but she didn't question it because she didn't want to foot the bill like I had. Okay, well, I mean, I, f I would probably trust my own mother too if she was like, I have a money saving technique. I mean, I guess I would probably ask just because I'm curious, but I understand maybe why OP sister wouldn't. It was like, oh, okay, mom, cool. I don't want anything to do with the wedding planning process. If you save money, awesome. She told me not to eat the food and thanked me for the warning. No, I would not be eating this food either. From there, my husband and I discreetly started telling some guests to be wary of the food and the rest of the night was fine. My mom caught some flack for being cheap. This is more than just being cheap though. This is dangerous. Like food, that can really make you sick. And I very much do not, I am somebody who worries about the quality of food. So this would make me very anxious, but I wouldn't know. So I guess that doesn't matter. Some of our relatives have been saying that I intentionally made my family look bad and that the food was fine as it was frozen and then defrosted for the wedding. I don't know. I want to know what the food is. I'm very curious to know what the food is that was frozen and defrosted. They say no one would have known if I didn't make stink over it. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I did anything wrong. I could use some help and would like to know if I should apologize. Am I the asshole? There are some edits. So I'll be reading the edits. Edit. I'm getting a lot of repeat questions, so I figured I'd post here. My wedding had about 200 guests. It's a pretty big wedding. My husband has a large family and we intentionally planned for more people to come 
if you hear Brandy walking around or little clicks on the ground, that's, that's just Brandy. My husband has a large family. My husband has a large family and we intentionally planned for more people to come and knew that a lot wouldn't for one reason or another. So we knew we'd likely have leftovers and wanted to be smart about it. Donating to the, the uh, soup kitchen. My sister, edit number two. My sister and her husband have been together for about 10 years. They recently decided to get married for tax reasons and wanted to do a courthouse wedding, but my mom begged her to let her do an event. So she had a small wedding with only about 50 people. My sister hates planning and people, so she let my mom do everything. And the third edit is, have y'all never heard of garage freezers? They're super common where I'm from. So I'm guessing some people were asking, where did she store all this extra food? If there was like a lot of food to feed 50 people, where was it? Um, in a garage freezer. Okay, so is OP the asshole? No, I would definitely say no, OP, you're not the asshole here. I would be, I would be telling everybody too, which just because I would do something does not mean it's not, it doesn't mean it's the correct answer or anything, obviously. But this is, we're using our own opinions here and our own life experiences and biases. And I would definitely be telling everybody too. If I knew this food was from eight months ago, this isn't even about being cheap at all. Like, I, if you can save money, awesome, but do it safely. This seems very dangerous to other people's well-being. I believe everybody should have like the knowledge of what they're putting in their body. And most people, when you are being served a meal uh, at a, like an event or like a restaurant or something, you have you're under the impression that this food is not eight months old, defrosted from a freezer from a previous event eight months ago. Okay, so no, OP, I do not think you're the asshole. Let's see what some comments say. Not the asshole. OMG, that is, that is not, OMG. It's not that it was stored frozen for eight months, but it's that it sat on a buffet table for God knows how long at your wedding and then in your mother's car before it was frozen. This is not only tacky, but super dangerous. I, that's not even something that crossed my mind. Yeah, wow, okay, that makes the situation even worse. Brandy, stop, stop. Not the asshole. Has nothing to do with being frozen, but how it was frozen, stored, and then thawed out. Unless your mom has food handler training, I'm sure the food had extras. Yeah, gross. Let's read another post. Am I the asshole for not pretending to be the father of my friend's baby? Just based off the title, I'm going to say no. Um, I'm not really sure the circumstance where you would need to pretend to be the father of somebody's baby. But even if, like, I, I can't think of a situation where that would be necessary. It's not your baby, so you would never have to pretend to be the baby's father? Well, maybe there is. Let's read the post and find out. I, 20-year-old man, have a friend from uni, 21-year-old woman, who is pregnant. Her mother and sisters are throwing a gender reveal for her. Her mother and stepfather are basically demanding that the father of the baby attend. When she announced her pregnancy, her family were not happy. One of the stipulations that her stepfather had, if he was to support her and the child financially, was that the father had to be involved to some extent with expenses, etc. Nobody is forcing her to marry him or be in a relationship with, her, with him, as far as I was aware, but her family does not want her to be a single parent. I understand, like, maybe why the... OP's friend's parents would not want her to be a single parent, but that's really nobody's decision but the pregnant person. She's 21 years old. Like, if she wants to be a single mother, then that's that's up for her to decide. Unfortunately for her, the father was a, t a Tinder date who blocked her on everything when she told him about the pregnancy. Well, that's nice. Good. She really needs her stepfather and mother's continued financial support since she doesn't have a paid job, she said, OP said that he met her in uni, so I'm guessing she's 21, maybe she's still going to school and just doesn't have a paid job right now. Her course requires her to do X amount of hours of industry experience, so between that and her research project, she does not have much time. So she has been lying for months and pretending to have a semi-regular contact with the baby's father. Oh, this is not an OP, this is OP's friend. Like, you can't be lying about this and expect to get away with it. Like, lying for months about having regular contact or semi-regular contact with the baby's father? Your family's gonna find out. Our friends are mostly girls, with only two guys. The other guy has met her family before, and her sister knows he is gay, but they have not met me. 
So my friend asked me to attend the gender reveal and say I was the baby's father. I was initially conflicted and said I'd think about it. She dropped it after that for a few days. After talking about it with a friend, I decided I really did not want to because A, this does not sound like the sort of lie you tell once and I don't know how long I have to keep in being involved. Yeah, that's what I would be thinking too. This is a lie that you can't just tell. Like, you can't, this the truth's gonna come out. People are gonna know. And while we are from completely different ends of the country with social media, I fear this could get to people in my hometown or my parents who may believe that I've actually gotten a woman pregnant, which I have not. Yes, I think that's totally valid to be concerned about your own life here, OP. Like, you don't have to be telling this whole lie that could, the very long ongoing lie for your friend when you are not comfortable with that. I explained this to her the next time I saw her and she looked disappointed, but agreed it was up to me. Yeah, that's probably how this conversation should go. However, for the past three weeks, most, if not all, of our friends, including one of my housemates, have been telling me how stressed she is and that she guarantees it'll be a one-time thing. And I have really let her down. This is not going to be a one-time thing. How could this be a one-time thing? Pretending to be the father of this child? No, this, this is going to, this is not a one-time lie. And I'm sure OP's friend is really stressed. That, this, this is, difficult situation for her to be in. Even if she's really, really stressed about her situation, that's not OP's responsibility to step in and be like, I will pretend to be the father of this baby. And I feel like it's very strange for the friends in the friend group. Like these people should understand this is not gonna be a one-time lie. And even if OP's friend is very stressed, that's not really OP's problem to solve. If he wanted to, that is completely up to him, but that's not his responsibility. We spoke about it again yesterday and she tried to reassure me that she wouldn't ask me again and that she shall make sure no pictures of me are taken or posted, but I find that unlikely. Okay, wait, hold on. Okay, so based off what I just read, she is trying to convince OP to be like, I promised a one-time thing. We won't take any pictures of you. No one will find out. How can you say that if, if OP friend seems to be, seems to have very strict parents. Oh, sorry, my nose itches because of this couch. So OP's friend seems to have very strict parents. The strict parents aren't just going to let go once they find out like, oh, you're the father of this baby? Okay, bye, never talk to you or mention you or see you ever again. I find that very hard to believe. What about the birth of the baby? Aren't they gonna expect, by they, I mean, OP's friend's parents expect OP to be there and like sign the birth certificate or be involved in this child's life to some degree or financially contribute? If OP's friend's stepfather says we will not financially support this child unless we have the father involved so he can financially support, they're going to expect something. There is no way to get away from it. There is no way to get out of this. Once you start, this is going to be an ongoing life forever until you come clean, which coming clean will be so much worse than just not telling the lie to begin with or not continuing the lie, not making the lie, just snowball. This is, there's no way this can end well. She was almost crying, confessing that she had no one else to ask and begged me to reconsider. That really sucks. That sucks for OP's friend to be in this situation, but that's not OP's problem to fix. Ah, uh, this sucks. I feel awful about it, but I know I'll just be stressed about getting out, getting out somehow. Yeah, it will, I promise. I have seen pictures of other people's baby showers and refuse to believe that the father of a child can be omitted from the photos. I mean, true, but even if, the story's gonna get out. They're gonna want you to keep being involved in this child's life. My friends think I'm overthinking and making a bad situation even worse for her. Am I the asshole? No, at OP, without even a doubt, you are not the asshole. If you wanted to help, that is completely up to you, but it is not your responsibility. This is a really rough situation. And I really empathize with OP's friends, the, his pregnant friend, but their other friends, I'm very confused how they don't see how this would not be a one and done. Like that's, that is senseless to me. Let's read some comments. Okay, so the top comment says, are you insane? Stay the fuck away from this girl and possibly the rest of your friend group. There is no way that this lie happens without ruining you in some way. Not the asshole. Open your eyes and let the bullet whiz right by you. So that was definitely a little more harsh than it needed to be. I don't necessarily think this friend 
OP, I mean. OP needs to stay away from all these friends. The friendship does seem odd, this dynamic, saying that he should do this for her, but, but I don't know if he needs to not be friends with her or the friend group. That's completely up to him. I don't think anything like needs to be done here. Someone else comments, let her hire a stranger actor if this is only a one-time thing. I mean, I doubt she can afford an actor if she is has not doesn't have a paid job and is in, in university, but um, the sentiment stands. If this is only a one-time thing, why does that have to be somebody you know? It's going to be ongoing. There's no way this is a one-time thing. It, there's no way she believes it's a one-time thing. Not the asshole. Her stepfather wants to nail someone for child support. I definitely think so too. I don't think you want to find yourself in any situation where you have to disprove paternity. And then OP comments that, I do fear that's why he wants to meet the baby's father, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, this, they definitely are going to want somebody ongoing. If he said, oh, if stepfather said he needs somebody, if he's going to financially support, he needs to meet the baby's father to help. OP, this is not going to go well for you. Not the asshole. This isn't your problem. Don't listen to your friends. I wouldn't involve yourself at all. I would not either. You do not know what her father would do. He would probably seek a lawyer and take you to court for child support and make a life difficult by tracking your family down and holding you accountable. Maybe, but he about the tracking your family down and holding you accountable, but he probably will get a lawyer and seek child support. You have no idea what will happen. Don't start a lie. She needs to stand up for herself and stop involving others. If her parents don't support her, then she needs to find a way to support herself and her child. Don't do it. Okay, last video was pretty long, so we'll only do one more. Am I the asshole for telling my husband I'm not comfortable driving our newborn three hours every day to take my older stepson to school? Driving three hours to school every day? That's a lot. Okay, based off just the title, no, I don't think you're the asshole for saying you don't want to drive your newborn three hours every day. That's a lot. And that's a, quite a commitment. I don't think, just based off the title, I don't think Opie's the asshole here. My husband, a 36-year-old man, and I, 33-year-old woman, have been together for six years. He has a son, 10-year-old boy, from a previous marriage that goes to school four to five minutes away from us, right next to his bio mom's house. He is with us almost five days out of the week, so either my husband or I have been driving him to school every day. That's almost three hours back and forth. He goes to school 45 minutes away. So I was thinking that 45 minutes plus 45 minutes, it's only an hour and a half. But if they drive from their house to the school, back to their house, that's an hour and a half. And then again to pick the child up, no, that's three hours. Yeah, that's a lot. I asked for him to be moved to a school that's closest to us since he spends majority of the time at our house. My husband and his ex decided that for now, it's best that he goes to the same school because of familiarity and maybe next year, he'll be closer to us. It's ultimately their decision and not mine. That was kind of what I was thinking too. Like maybe if the child is lives with the father and OP, then maybe he should go to school near them rather than near the mom if he doesn't live with the mom most of the time. I understand the familiarity and the sentiment of, well, these are where his friends are and this is the teachers he knows. And maybe next year, well, I mean, maybe I, it's something to consider, but OP's right. It may not be her decision. It's the parents of the child's decision. I am currently pregnant and our baby is due at the very end of December, December 31st, New Year's Eve baby. I asked my husband if my SS, oh, my stepson. I asked my husband if my stepson could be taken to school by his bio mom for a month or so after the baby is home. So I don't have to drive three hours every day with a newborn in the cold Midwest snow. Yeah, being, it'll a baby be born in December, very end of December, and then all through January. And if it's in the Midwest, I live in the Midwest too. Winter can have a lot of snow, can be a lot of ice. I understand Opie's concern here, especially since winter break is over a week or so after I give birth. To my surprise, I got hit with the, don't worry, bio mom, and I will figure out an arrangement for our son. I get that you will now have a different kid as a priority, but I'm sure that but I'm sure that if stepson was our bio son, you wouldn't have a problem doing what needs to be done for both kids. If stepson was OP's child, stepson would probably not be going to school 45 minutes away, which would be a three hour drive. This does not seem like equivalence here. 
I am so hurt by that statement. I have taken care of my stepson as if he was my own since he was four, and I have never treated him any different. I am on maternity leave until May of 2024, so I will be home when my husband works 24-hour shifts. I gotta reread that again. I am on maternity leave until May 2024, so I will be home and my husband works 24-hour shifts, so he can't take him on the days that he's working, so that responsibility falls on me. I imagine he's not working 24-hour shifts. Maybe he's away for 24 hours and comes back? I don't know of any job that works 24-hour shifts. Please let me know if you do. My family lives an hour away, so that's not an option to help with driving or babysitting every day. My husband doesn't have contact with his family. So am I the asshole for asking for help after the baby is born for a month or so? No, not at all. But there are some edits. Let me read the edits. Edit. His bio mom works five days a week, 12 hour shifts. So she'd have to switch her schedule in order to take him to school every day. Thank you everyone for your feedback and concurring that I am not crazy in the situation. Okay, so I'm guessing I, we are getting a hint of what the comments are gonna be like. I've been crying about this thing for the entire morning. Pregnancy hormones are helping. Even if like you, your feelings are valid, even if you weren't pregnant, this is the, this can be an emotional situation. And I'm also in the firm believer that there is never a time to cry or not cry besides when you feel like it or don't feel like it. If you feel like crying, okay, you can cry. I don't feel like there's any reason to be like, no, I shouldn't be crying right now. If you feel like it, I think you should be able to, but if you don't, then don't cry, no worries. Uh, the rest of this edit is about OP saying that she is thankful for the comments and she has to put her foot down. So I think we know what the comments are gonna be like. Let's look at the comments. Not the asshole, let them figure it out. You will be a busy mom with a newborn. I think your counter argument would be, if he was my son, I would enroll him in a school closer to where he lives, be closer to his friends and have a better social experience and doesn't need to spend three hours in the car every day. <laughs> Edit spends about one and a half hours in the car every day. True, the parents would be driving three hours, but the son is only in there for about an hour and a half. Not the asshole, pregnancy or not, bio kid or not, driving three hours a day for a 10 year old to go to school when it clearly isn't necessary is a bit unhinged. If you were in the absolute middle of nowhere and online school wasn't available, maybe. Yeah, I understand that. All right, I think I'm gonna end it here. Brandy wants to go play. So it doesn't look like we saw any assholes in this video today. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.